Kremlin again. Welcome back to this. For those of you who saw the first two videos, I'm sorry I had to delete those and waste your time. Unfortunately, I couldn't load up my save game in advance anymore. It would load up, I'd get my presidential brief, and then I could no longer click on anything and the game would, wouldn't advance. But on that game, those first two, we were the nationalist faction. We were Boris Yeltsin, a capitalist lover apparently, and we were trying to destroy the, the USSR. Uh, this time we're going to be the hardline faction aiming to maintain rigid authoritarian regime that characterized the Soviet Union under Leonid Brezhnev's 18-year reign. In the time-honored communist tradition, the hardliners believe in state control of all production and distribution, with government-subsidized food, housing, and other benefits to the citizens. The hardliners have a profound distrust of the Western nations and believe in maintaining a strong military and KGB presence, as well as state control of all information. Their most prominent political figure at this time is Igor Ligachev. So that's who we'll be. And let's personalize this book. I'm not sure what a, a hardcore sounding hardline communist name is. How about Stalinsky? No, it sounds too much like Lewinsky. Um, Stalinov. Stalin. Stalinov. There we go. Just add an "ov" onto anything. It makes it more communist. So let's see. Most of these beginning events will be the same. Let all the world know that the Soviet people strive for greatness, the new Soviet president proclaimed. Any who would doubt this, any who would cast us down in these troubled times must remember that the people who can survive the siege of Stalingrad will surrender. I think that's a mistake. I don't, that didn't sound right. You might want to revise that speech. The whole village sends its best wishes and your papa and I send kisses as you begin your duties as president. Love, Mama. So Mama sent us a message from home. We'll let all this stuff play out. Turn the sounds off here. Food unrest is continuing. Long-standing shortages continue. Yes, we know this. And crisis and rights. Crisis levels have been reached. Immediate action is called for. We must act quickly and boldly. So let's see. Policies, right? Our style of government. Completely despotic. Let's bump it up. Just one notch. Give them a, a little bit of free reign. Our military is going to go a little bit more aggressive. Our diplomatic policies, more hostile. Our trade policies, we'll take those just a little bit more open. Civil rights, are still restricted. Media freedom, leave that on very restricted. Actually, let's bump that down. It's very restricted there. Economic policies. Bump that back down. Work week. We'll give them a little bit more time off. They'll be uh, brainwashed and manipulated, but we'll let them have a little bit of comfort. Wage controls. Complete control. And the type of ownership. It's completely state-owned. And we'll just wait for the budget to come along. Then I'll set that up. I'm not sure if I can set that up beforehand. We must express our deep concern with your conservative extremism in both policy and actions. The Coalition of Progressive Delegations. The country must remain united. That's the most important thing right now. And sometimes that means keeping a tight grip. So the Gangrene News Network is back. We'll skip through them. Mostly because that was an accident, but... Oh well. Comrade, you have an urgent call from the Council of Ministers. Please respond at once. Ring, ring, ring. Comrade President, the no-confidence motion has been brought against you in the Politburo. The vote will be taken this afternoon. As my staff and I see it, you have these options. Bargain with the opposition and see if you can offer them enough to call off the vote counter the opposition by calling in any outstanding political favors you have due. Appeal to the will of the people and hope they'll back you up. Or brazen it out by facing your opponents and calling for an immediate Politburo vote. Of course you could always resign gracefully and spare your faction the embarrassment of a vote. 
So, we're not even a month into office here, and we're already trying to be ousted. I will upload this video if we die here. Bargain with the opposition. Pay whatever funds necessary to ensure their support. Call in political favors and put up a fight. Appeal to the will of the people and make the opposition back down? Hmm. The people probably don't give much of a damn. So we're crooked, we're gonna bargain with the opposition and pay whatever funds it takes to buy their support. Every man has a price. The president narrowly avoided losing a vote of confidence in the Politburo today after arduous negotiations. Rumor has it that members of the opposition were considerably enriched by the experience. That's because they're all crooked and can't be trusted. You should only place your trust in my party. We would never be bought out by them. So let's see. It's March 18, 1985. See attached for recent street humor. Commissar, our living conditions have improved substantially. Worker, good. Now what about our living conditions? Soviet teen, Dad, can I have the car keys? Soviet Dad, don't lose them. We get the car in just seven years. Keep making those uh, payments, I guess. The American Stock Exchange closed today after one of the longest downturns in its history. They'll fail. Their people aren't as hard as we are. We've suffered and been through much. We'll see who stands out last. As May Day approaches, make preparations for the annual policy. Well, we're going to approve these because I've already set them up. I'm already one step ahead of them. We need to get more food going. Employment is fine. Hopefully we'll get more people in the military. No civil rights. Wonder if I should focus on education any. I'm not sure if having a smarter population would be smart in our situation. An urgent call from the Council of Ministers. The Ministry of Agriculture suggests the plan to solve your food problem by increasing the amount of private farming. Do you want to accept the plan as it is, or perhaps scale it down a bit to place the hardline elements, or ignore it, or reject it? Hmm. Implement a plan to increase the amount of private farming. Ignore the plan to increase. Uh, this is the one that's hard. I mean, on one hand, I do think private farming, even from a, a communistic standpoint, would probably be a good thing. If the people would just supply themselves a little bit better. We could have them focus on other things. So we will give them just a little bit of land. But they're not getting any rights. The president today agreed to greatly expand the amount of private farming. Advisors look at him questionly. And an urgent phone call from TASS, the Ministry of Propaganda. Comrade President, a, medic, uh, a moderate radical coalition says we cannot improve until we learn to criticize ourselves. And they have suggested we institute the cursed policy of Glasnost. Should we do it? Uh, should we stall and pretend to support the proposal but make no substantive changes? Reject the radical initiative out of hand? Allow the press to talk freely about other countries but not about our own? Or allow the press to speak freely about the current affairs? I think that we'll just stall, buy time, Pretend that we're doing something and use this as a talking point later on when the elections come up. It'll be something that both of our parties can fight over. The president today announced that acceptance of the Politburo proposed to introduce Glasnost and an appoint a special committee to study how best to implement it. A report was expected within the year. We'll have our top advisors working on it. And another phone call from TASS. Comrade President, our studies show that the rampant alcoholism in our country is having a major negative impact on productivity. We suggest you launch some sort of sweeping anti-alcoholism campaign to get this country back on its feet. You could impose harsh restrictions against public drunkenness or limit the amount of alcohol available to the public. Or you could raise the price of alcohol to increase revenues. What's your preference on this? Hmm. I think that we'll... 
I think that we'll control the alcohol prices in order to curb demand. We'll make it so that only the richest can buy it. Saying that something must be done to curb the public's demand for alcohol, the president yesterday raised the state prices for alcohol, both to produce increased revenues and hopefully to curb consumer demand for it. We need our population uh, out there working, not sitting in their homes drinking and enjoying their miserable little existences. Beep, beep, beep. The president ordered the distribution of private plots to one million lucky families today. It's a historical moment for the country.